Hello again everyone and welcome back to my vlog. I've been calling it Gardening by the Moon, but last time out I discovered a website with exactly the same name that I'm not affiliated to. So I'm trying to come up with a new handle for it at the moment. Something will come up when the time is right, but until then I'll just call it my vlog. In the last few videos, I've covered the main lunar cycles that disciples of biodynamic gardening observe. And in this episode, I'm going to look at the last few points that are covered by the calendar that I intend to use, issued by Biodynamic Services. I'll leave a link in the description box below for you if you want to get your own. Firstly, there's the apogee and perigee, also known as the anomalistic lunar rhythm. The moon's transit has an elliptical trajectory, and when it's at its closest to the Earth, it's at the perigee, and when it's at its furthest away, it's the apogee. Perigee these days is quite often known as a supermoon. And this rhythm is most commonly known for its effect on the tides, which are stronger at perigee and not so great at apogee. Biodynami write that there's a divergence of opinion over the effects of these phenomena on work carried out at the time, and it has left me with a bit of a problem, because apart from their comments on the subject, the only other substantive info I found was on my favourite moon site, lunarium.co.uk, and they quote Maria Tun, a leading light in this field, from her book, work on the land and the constellations, which you can read here. She writes that the perigee is a bad day to sow seeds as germination is poor, but apogee is comparatively beneficial. Biodynami cite research from the Institute of Biodynamic Research in Germany, claiming that sowing on the perigee is a great idea. They also suggest avoiding sowing at apogee. Although my plan is to follow Biodynami's calendar, I think I'll have to try and avoid sowing at all on these days to start with if possible, or maybe planting a few seeds and seeing how they go. I'm hoping the other influences will have greater significance, like the sidereal rhythm when the moon is in the root and leaf signs and so on. Certainly there must be some subtle effect caused by the differing distance of the moon from the planet Earth, even if it's only the strength of its effect on other cycles. I guess the important thing is not to get too screwed up about it for now, and deal with it at the time. It will be interesting to see if apogee days are clear and bright and perigee days are dull and rainy though. Not that I'm looking to call Maria Turner fraud. Next up, trines. These are formed when three planets are positioned so that an angle of 120 degrees is formed. This calendar purports to list them all and has a bit to say on the subject as you can see here. Although I've read that trines are generally a favourable aspect, there are apparently some negative trines. So I'll have to keep rereading the advice until it starts to sink in. And as with everything, my understanding of it will improve as I see what happens in my own garden. Oppositions, which are best explained by these graphics. Once again, I'm delivered into a state of mild confusion, as one source tells me that oppositions are not good, and my calendar calls them beneficial, especially Moon-Saturn oppositions, which occur every 27.5 days and are apparently a great time for sowing. Maria Tun goes along with this idea, but unfortunately, Nick Collistrum disagrees, although he does rate Moon Sextile and Trine Saturn. Conjunctions are a similarly confusing story, although the calendar is in accord with Maria Tun when they both consider the aspect to be rather negative, but Nick disagrees, especially with the Saturn conjunction. Fortunately, squares, the 90 degree angular positions, are considered generally negative, or at least neutral, by all sources, so that is a slight relief, although it might be better to have universal accord on times that I should be doing something rather than times I shouldn't. Retrograde movement is also listed on the calendar, but I'll have to feel my way into that one too, as the explanation doesn't really clarify the effect too much for me at the moment, and influence on the atmosphere is a bit like trines, and I guess a lot like everything else. Again, understanding will come with time, I'm sure. Finally, and perhaps most curiously, Easter. Easter is given a mention by Biodynami, who decide again on this occasion to concur with Maria and recommend caution. I personally smell a tactic to prevent alienation from the religious fraternity with this advice, who might already see this whole practice as unholy in some way, but it might be handy to have a decent excuse for a break at that time. So that's pretty much all of the classroom stuff gone through. Now it's a matter of applying it to the real world. What have I taken from this so far? Well, the more I learn, the less I'm sure of. But that's always been my relationship with education. But 
feeling it and doing it and generally gaining empirical knowledge will boost my confidence and just being outside will raise the frequency. I bought a load of seeds and a few gardening essentials the other day uh, but I still need to buy a greenhouse and with the help of a local farmer we need to put something on the soil here to make it less acidic which hopefully he's going to help us with fairly soon. I must confess as I watch the days grow longer I'm itching to get out there and do something. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, I hope you come back for the next one and until then take care and goodbye. <laughs>